Hello and welcome. We are Team XMOS. We're proud to present to you our project this year, the Smart Baby Monitor. The technical directors for this project were Dr. Andrew Cavanaugh, Stephen Enzovino, and Kieran Thecker, all URI alums or current students. The project consists of myself, Nathan Dwyer, and my partner, Dow Townsavath, both electrical engineering majors with minors in mathematics. Now a brief overview of the XMOS company. XMOS is the home of multi-core microcontrollers. It has a headquarters in Bristol, UK, with offices in New Hampshire, in the United States, and a couple in Asia. Its main focus is on artificial intelligence of things, or AIoT products, consumer and professional audio solutions, and industrial robotics. Mainly, they are the developers of the XCore AI architecture, a keystone of this project. Now, onto the motivation for our project. The marketplace for AIoT devices are largely internet connected and dependent, often sacrificing privacy and for features. Using the XCore AI architecture, as well as the established XMOS voice front end, we plan to create a baby monitor with smart features that doesn't rely on internet connectivity to provide unparalleled privacy to the user. For the last year, the anticipated best outcome for the project has been a prototype product using the XMOS development kits and a custom daughter board that we fabricate capable of echo cancellation, stereo microphone recording, playback through its integrated speakers, as well as full duplex communication with a remote unit and, if time permits, sound recognition and event detection using the onboard AI chip. Over the course of the past two semesters, we've achieved a fully featured Explorer board program that can send and receive audio over MQTT, as well as an improved daughter board with custom circuitry ready to be integrated with an Xbox development board, although it has not been fully integrated yet. To speak a little bit more on the accomplishments on the software side, we were able to combine some of the XMOS examples to create a microphone and data streaming program, as well as have a small proof of concept using the onboard DAC instead of the daughter board. Uh, this was achieved using a TCP connection through an MQTT broker to remote to a PC over Wi-Fi instead of a separate development board, saving on time and resources. On the hardware side of things, we were able to fabricate a daughter board as well as many prototypes onto that. We selected a new buck converter from Texas Instruments for the power supply and a new audio codec from CLL Microcircuits. We even evaluated and acquired a test kit for the audio codec from CML Microcircuits to make the process go a little bit smoother in terms of integration with our boards. Now, what this all means for XMOS, through our project, we hope to create a, comp a competitor for current smart baby monitors, being able to combine multiple packages or well, multiple utilities into one package, such as white noise, video or talk back, and those sorts of things, as well as um, being able to perform AIoT actions that's, or while staying completely internet disconnected, adding privacy. In turn, we hope that this product will establish Xbox as a landmark company in the market of privacy-minded AIoT devices for consumers. In short, the block diagram that we used to outline our project looked a little something like this, where we'd have the baby unit on the left and the parent unit on the right, connected in with a full duplex connection, the baby unit capable of taking in the audio from the baby, providing or um, doing some denoising based on the white noise that was outputted, sending that to the parent unit, and the parent unit would have a little bit more powerful of a chip to do any AI information that needed to be done. Now onto my personal technical contributions. My role this year was primarily as a CPE instead of an ELE. I was writing and debugging code for the Xbox hardware as, as well as learning the programming tools and software seen on the right. I had some minor roles in assisting in the ELE duties such as advising on component selection and existing, or assisting in the PCB routing fabrication and selection. In addition to that, I put considerable time into researching machine learning, taking Google's machine learning crash course, testing a different sound detection models, and ended up choosing an LSTM model for the project. Despite not being able to integrate this into the project now, hopefully researchers at XMOS will be able to use this in the future. As well as that, I was able to test features of the XMOS dev kit to see what we can incorporate into our project, such as the internet throughput test, the audio microphone test, I squared SSPI test to see if our codec would perform a full configuration. And finally, I managed to interface the Xbox Explorer board with the CML codec as seen on the right, just to speed up the I squared S configuration of our own daughter board. As well as that, I connected the Explorer board to an MQTT broker hosted on a PC over Wi-Fi and coupled that with a microphone streaming example to be able to stream audio from the microphones to the Explorer board back to a PC. 
and using MQTT's subscribe function, create a full duplex audio loop by sending back white noise to the Explorer board from the PC. It's now my pleasure to introduce my partner in this project, Dao Townsvath. Hello everyone, my name is Dao, and I'll be talking about my technical contributions for all of the hardware for this project. To start off, I had to evaluate the design of the PCB from the previous year and figure out what things I should change and what I should improve. With that being said, I had to find two completely new parts, a new buck converter and a new audio codec, and make a whole redesign with all the required external components. I tried to take as many design features from the previous design and incorporate it to the new one, so you can see some similarities in 3D renders to the right, an example being the voltage filter on the top left of each picture. After all of our prototyping, testing, and redesigns, we created our final board and named it the Baby Komodo V2B, since Komodo Dragons also go by the name Komodo Monitors. We had this board fabricated and assembled professionally, so we could avoid any potential soldering issues than if we were to assemble it in-house. After we received them, I did my usual testing and powered it on to observe the LEDs, as shown in the bottom left picture. After that, the next main part was to check all of the voltages and all the test points that I placed around the board, an example being the VIA on the top left labeled 3V3. Thankfully, this final board solved, solved our previous buck converter problem because the design before this wasn't outputting the proper voltages, and that was due to a layout issue. After being able to successfully power our board, the next thing to do was to test the audio codec, which is the remaining part of our board. We attempted to use a few different ways to test it, like using a Raspberry Pi Pico to send signals through it, or connecting it to the audio codec evaluation kit that we received last semester. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I could not successfully program a Raspberry Pi Pico, so I had to give up on that. The next option was the evaluation kit, and that could record and transmit audio. Our first idea was to branch the host board and audio codec board, which are both a part of the evaluation kit, to a breadboard, and that's shown in the picture to the left, and we have to verify that it works. After verifying its functionality, as shown in the right picture, we would try to connect wires from that breadboard to our daughter board to see if we can get any signals out of it. Unfortunately, that would also not work because the evaluation kit is configured for the SPI serial protocol, and our board, the daughter board that we made, was designed for the TWI serial protocol. Out of options, our last method was to actually connect our board to an Exynos Explorer board that was shown previously and communicate through that. I'd like to thank everyone that helped us along our capstone journey and for giving us the opportunity to build our skills and experience the real world.